It is TV theme song week on The Masked Singer. We met two new competitors, and of course, the harp sang again. Let's talk The Masked Singer. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my Masked Singer recap and reaction video for uh, Season 8, Episode 3. This is TV theme songs. Uh, they don't usually have themes with the episodes, so I thought it was kind of interesting um, that they did that. On occasion, there would be like some sort of... Um, you know, overall theme, but not necessarily with the songs themselves. This reminded me more of, like, American Idol when they used to do, maybe they still do it, I haven't watched the show in a long time, but when they used to do, like, oh, this week it's it's Elvis week, or this week it's, you know, love songs that made number one week, or whatever. So here, everybody is all about singing the TV theme song. So, uh, should be interesting to talk about. We met the mummies, we met the fortune teller, and the harp sang again. Before we get involved with any of this stuff, uh, I want to welcome you into Dan Reviews that we do the Masked Singer recap and reaction video every single week. We've been doing it since season three, um, and I always love hearing from you guys in the comments of who you think is under these masks. It uh, definitely helps me out on occasion uh, with my own thought process, and uh, hopefully I help out you guys as well when you watch these videos. That's what it's all about, sort of the togetherness of this show. So, Definitely don't be shy. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think. And like this video, too. That helps the channel. And, uh, of course, if you're not one of my subscribers, would love to have you uh, do that as well. So hit that subscribe button down there. Okay, so let's get into the TV theme song episode. Uh, I have been proven wrong over and over again about this season and where we are going with the different weeks. Because at first, I thought we were going to meet three... Or, uh, I thought we were going to meet four new uh, contestants every week and one of them would be crowned the king or the queen, and then they would move on to the semifinals. But then last week, we saw the harp again, and we only saw two new competitors go against her, so then I thought, okay, well now, it's just gonna be whoever keeps going along and along. But no, at the beginning of this episode, uh, Nick Cannon announced that whoever wins at the end of this episode will automatically move on to the semifinals, which means next week, I guess we're gonna get four new singers again, just like we did with the first time, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm so thrown by what they're doing this season. Uh, there's 26 total celebrities. Now, I again, and I said this in week one, I don't know if that means 26 different acts or 26 different celebrities. Because this week, for example, with the mummies, we have three in there. So do they count as three or one? I'm not sure. Um, all will be revealed, I guess, by the, the end of the season. But uh, <laughs> we're just sort of going along uh, week after week and uh, sort of learning new information as we go. Um, look, I mean, the show is many, many years old now, and uh, they need to mix it up. So I I'm fine with what they're doing. It's just uh, has not been quite cl as clear to me as I would have liked, uh, and I keep giving sort of erroneous information. But all right, so uh, we started out with uh, Robin Thicke doing a great tribute to his father, the late Alan Thicke, uh, singing the Growing Pains theme song, which uh, Alan Thicke co-wrote uh, with his wife, Gloria Loring, and I think they sang it together, perhaps, um, in that, uh, at least in the first season uh, of it. So Robin sang it. Robin actually has a, a pretty decent voice. Um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of his pop hits have been sort of auto-tuned a bit, um, but I, I do think he has a great voice. So that was fun. And then everybody was uh, dressed up in, uh, you know, a different TV show, outfit uh jenny was doing like a wonder woman type thing um i don't know what nicole was doing to be honest she looked beautiful but I, I didn't get a specific show from that and then ken uh just had his dr ken uh outfit on from his own sitcom dr ken and then uh, nick cannon did like a 70s um i don't know maybe jj walker from good times or one of the kids from what's happening you know that kind of a look um so all right then we get to the actual contestants. The mummies were up first. Oh, and no special guests this week. I thought as of, you know, because last week when they had the Battle Royale, if they had a tie, they had a fifth person there to sort of break that tie. Um, but I, I guess, I, look, I mean, I, I don't know yet because I haven't gotten that far in the episode, but I'm pretty sure the harp is going to be moving on to the semifinal. She was once again amazing, um, but we'll talk about that later. So first the mummies were up um, and they do their little 
cutesy things the producers do. So it says likes, eternal slumber, and the clue that we, the audience, see that the panel, I think, does not see. It says lucky number five. Uh, all right, so there were three of these guys, uh, and they say we're coming to you live and in living color. The uh, clue package had a Gilligan's Island type of theme. Uh, it said, you watched us grow up. We, we may feel like your family. Um, we see a blueprint of a house with the word iconic on it. So obviously, uh, you know, people that grew up in uh, an iconic looking house on television. Uh, at one point, one of them said, whoa, sort of like Joey Lawrence does. Um, there was a picture of the fox, which was Wayne Brady from uh, season two, I think. Um, they said uh, that they've learned from each other and taught us life lessons, us, the audience, uh, that they've been off the grid for a while. And then we saw a Tiger Pop magazine, which obviously is a nod to Tiger Beat. Um, and then we saw a, a movie theater ticket as well. The song they did was Hey, Hey, We're the Monkeys, but they changed it to Hey, Hey, We're the Mummies. Uh, so that was kind of fun. And then uh, for the post-song clue this week, we have uh, some famous TV people bringing out TV dinner clues. And this one was Tori Spelling, who was uh, in a previous season as the Unicorn. Um, and it was a picture of blended Berry Brothers smoothie. Uh, one of them said, hey, it's good for the soul. Another one said, mm, it's refreshing. And another one said, it's classic. So the original guesses from the panel, uh, Nicole was between two, 90210 people, because Tori Spelling, uh, she thought that was sort of part of the clue, I guess. And then uh, she thought maybe the Brady boys were under there. And then uh, Ken was thinking it was the Lawrence brothers, because of course of the whoa, and thinking Joey Lawrence with Matthew Lawrence, and he couldn't think of the third brother. Um, so he joked that it was Martin Lawrence. I actually couldn't think of the third brother either. Um, and before I do my video, I don't look things up because if it is them, I don't want to, you know, search who's the third Lawrence brother and it comes up, oh, they were the mummies tonight on the show. Um, so, because usually I don't get to watch it live. So I didn't do that, but I don't know who the third Lawrence brother is. Um, all right, so we're going to actually start here with the reveals because the mummies uh, were the first ones to get sent home and the first ones to be unmasked. So... Once we do that, then the harp and the fortune teller will sing again. So we'll get to their clues sort of uh, in a little bit. First, let's, let's stay on the mummies. All right, so um, I actually was kind of thinking Joey Lawrence and his brothers for a little bit because of that woe. Um, and they sort of like snuck it in there kind of at the end of a sentence, maybe hoping nobody would notice, right? So I was like, okay, they're going for that kind of thing. But... Then they started singing, and I thought, mm, this is definitely somebody a bit older than the Lawrence Brothers. I mean, you know, the Lawrence Brothers are probably about my age and younger. Um, and then I realized the, the whole blueprint thing with the iconic house. Well, this is a hunt for me, this is 100 percent at this point. It's got to be the Brady kids, and here's why. Because, well, number one, they showed a picture of the fox, Wayne Brady, Brady kid. Okay. Uh, the clue up front, lucky number five. Brady Bunch was on for five seasons. All right, then at the end, you had the Tiger Pop magazine. You know, look, these these uh, boys were pinup stars. Certainly Barry Williams was uh, in the early 70s. But uh, in addition to that, we saw the, the cinema ticket. Well, they've made several Brady Bunch movies. In fact, one of my all-time favorite movies is that first Brady Bunch movie. Um, and they had a couple of theatrical movies based on the show. But the, the thing that got me the most, not only do they live in an iconic house that they, by the way, recreated for a reality show on, I think it was TLC, a few years ago, but the reason it was on a blueprint is because Mike Brady was an architect. So this is so clearly, in my mind, Barry Williams, um, who played Peter, I can't remember. Mike Lookinland played Bobby. Um, uh, something Knight. Peter, no. Something Knight. Christopher Knight. That's what it is. Uh, all right. So I am positive that that is who this is. But since these were the first ones voted off... Nick went to the panel for their final guesses. Ken stuck with the Lawrence brothers. Jenny McCarthy thought because of the blueprint, it could be the boys from Home Improvement. I did think of that for a split second. Um, but again, it, it sounds to me like someone older. 
Um, and then Nicole decided between 90210 and the Brady's, she was going with the Brady boys. Um, and she even mentioned with the TV dinner, blended Barry bros. Well, Barry Williams is, is one of them. So, you know, and then all the B's blended Barry bros, Brady's. Um, so it makes sense. And then Robin said he couldn't come up with a better one than that. So he was also going with the Brady's. I think this has to be, uh, the trio of boys from the Brady Bunch. Um, and, and just the voice. You could tell it was somebody that sings. And Barry Williams still has his show in Vegas. Uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, uh, they're so old. God bless their hearts. I literally... Well, first of all, we just saw them on... Um, they were at the uh, Emmy Awards. They, Them and, and uh, two of the sisters. I think uh, Marsha was not there. But uh, Eve Plum and Susan Olsen were there uh, at the Emmys just sort of waving at their table. Hey, the Brady Bunch is here, everybody. For whatever reason, you know, who cares? I mean, like, it was, it was just, <laughs> it was just funny. I forget what, um, podcast I was listening to, but, uh, somebody that is friends with, um, Eve Plum was being interviewed that week. It was a comedian or something. Um, and she had said, oh yeah, like Eve Plum said she was on the way to the, um, Emmys, but they like didn't tell her what they were, what they were doing or whatever. And yeah, it turns out they just sat there and waved to the camera and that was it. But whatever, they got to go to the Emmy. So cool. Um, but, uh, like I was saying, Barry Williams still does a regular show. I said, I had said Vegas while they were taking it off, but it's not Vegas. I think it's Branson, Missouri, but, um, yeah, whoever this was could certainly sing, which is why I was initially thinking Joey Lawrence, because he had a couple of albums in the early 90s as well. But uh, no, anyway, it is, uh, it was, I was 100% on that one. Um, so chalk up another one for me in the win column. Um, all right, so one more thing about the uh, the Bradys here before we move on. Uh, I've I've been watching, re-watching, I should say, uh, the old show. Uh, one of my all-time favorites and my first, like, favorite show that wasn't, like, Sesame Street. Um, loved the Brady Bunch growing up. So, um, they, before they went to commercial, they had them sing, um, Sunshine Day. And I actually started tearing up. Um, <laughs> Barry Williams had said this was the first time they had sang together really since the days of the Brady's. They used to have the variety show and they used to have make record albums uh, in the 70s together. Um, so I just, uh, that choked me up. And uh, whew, it, was, it was a good time for sure. Um, so I, I'm glad they had them on. Um, they don't make cast recordings anymore from TV shows. <laughs> All the 70s shows, like Laverne and Shirley had their their own album, and um, Lenny and Squiggy from Laverne and Shirley had an album as well, and then the Happy Days people had an album, and uh, yeah, that, that was the thing to do, and then, of course, the Partridge family, because uh, that was a singing show. But anyway, all right, so on to the other two contestants. Uh, Fortune Teller was next, came out in this big uh, stand, but eventually... Uh, worked his way out of that. He wasn't uh, stuck in there the whole time. Uh, his likes are playing the lottery, and his clue was avoids storms. Uh, all right. He said, growing up in Queens, he had visions of being a big music king, um, but he didn't have a great voice, so he tried to make it as a dancer. Um, okay, then we see a business card being handed to him. He said he got beat out by Jermaine Dupree. I don't know what kind of contest he was talking about, but um, I, I think when he was saying he wanted to make it as a dancer, he got beat out as, by Jermaine Dupree. Um, and then we see a wheel spinning. It landed on Jackpot. Um, he said, everyone wanted a dash of me in their music video. Um, we saw an angel. And then he said uh, he got an unusual offer while he was keeping up with the Kardashians and he might have missed out if it wasn't for them. He sang the theme song to the Jeffersons. Moving on up. Great tune. And then uh, his TV dinner clue was brought out by Jody Sweeten from Full House. And it said, New York fresh pizza dough. He said, with time, you can turn dough into your piece of the pie. So we're thinking sort of maybe a business mogul of some sort. Um, Jenny McCarthy said it could be Jonathan Shabon who I think is maybe the Kardashian's uh, chef or something. Um, and then she thought maybe P. Diddy because of all the business stuff. Uh, Ken thought it could be Damon John from Shark Tank. 
makes his own clothes. We saw like a big clothing rack in, in the clue package as well. I didn't write that down, but he had brought that up for Damon John. And then Nicole thought it could be Ryan Seacrest um, because he is the one who really sort of discovered the Kardashians with their own show. He produced Keeping Up with the Kardashians, et cetera, et cetera. I think, I think if it were Ryan Seacrest, we would see a lot of other clues um, for him. You know, obviously he's got a million jobs. He does the New Year's Eve thing. He hosts with uh, Kelly Ripa. He hosts live. He hosted American Idol for years and, and I think still does. Um, so, I, you know, I think they would have given us different clues uh, for him. So I don't know about that. I have my own thought on that, but he uh, is going to be unmasked. So let's first go to the harp. Um, we didn't really get many more clues from her, it was just sort of showing us what we already knew. Um, and then she said, uh, her, she, uh, she'll give us one new clue, and it was a Christmas cupcake. Um, so something with maybe a Christmas album or something. And she sang uh, one of the great theme songs of all time, although the Jeffersons was too, um, but G the Golden Girls. She sang Thank You for Being a Friend. Um, it brought everyone literally to like tears. Um, she's so good. Nicole thought it could be uh, Jill Scott or Amber Riley. Jenny thought it could be Fantasia or Ariana DeBose. Um, oh, and, the, and her TV dinner clue, by the way, uh, Tori Spelling came and brought that one back out. Purple mashed potatoes was the clue. I don't really quite get that with this person, um, but I I'm convinced, especially after hearing the voice tonight, uh, this is got to be Amber Riley from Glee. Um, the first week, I didn't know it was her. You guys on the on the comments got me there for sure. Um, as I sort of looked, re-looked over the clues, I thought, oh yeah, this is this makes sense for Amber Riley. Then I heard her sing week two, and I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's her. And then this week, it's, it's a home run. It's most definitely Amber Riley. Um, and the harp is the one who uh, won out tonight as well. So she will be moving on to, I guess, now the semifinals. Uh, so we'll see her again in, I don't know, a couple of months, I guess. Um, and then uh, the, that means the fortune teller is going home. And I love, so they, they came back after um, doing the, the unmasking for the Brady kids, and Brady men now. And um, they had the battle royale, and they sang back and forth, um, well, actually, not even back and forth, one at a time, but it was the same song, the Full House theme song, which was kind of cute because, of course, Jody Sweeten was in the audience. But Harp's performance was, like, amazing. It was so great. Everyone was just crying about it, um, you know, and Ken had had said that, um, you know, their, uh, their patron saint, uh, Bob Saget, was looking down. Uh, smiling at that performance, and he, of course, was a, a contestant on The Masked Singer in, uh, I think that was season four. He played the squiggly monster, um, and so, you know, Jody Sweeten just, just sort of nodded her head. I think she was about to cry, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, then the panel acts like they don't, they, oh, we have such a tough decision to make. No, you don't. Harp is literally, I mean, <laughs> Amber Riley's voice is incredible. Harp is one of the best singers you've ever had on the show. It's literally one of the easiest choices they've ever made. Um, so anyway, so we will see Harp again. Fortune teller, final guesses. Jenny ended up going with Damon Dash, who I guess does have a clothing line through the Kardashians. Ken stuck with Damon John. Nicole stuck with Ryan Seacrest. And Robin, uh, I thought this was a little too on the nose, and that's why I don't think it's him. Uh, but he thought it could be Ray J. Ray J, of course, had the infamous sex tape that really kick-started uh, Kim Kardashian's career and thus the careers of the whole family. I, I hate the Kardashians, by the way. I don't say it enough, um, but I do hate them. Uh, all right, here's my guess. It's nobody that's been mentioned. So if this is right, it is a Dan original. Um, just looking at the clue package, the first thing that stuck out to me was that he got beaten out by Jermaine Dupree. Now, Look, I'm not a huge hip-hop fan, but um, back in the early 2000s, when all the pop stars had hip-hop artists on their singles, um, you know, Janet Jackson had Jermaine Dupri, and a few other artists that are very big had Jermaine Dupri on their songs. So I had to think, okay, who is a contemporary of Jermaine Dupri, like literally the same age within a year maybe, that would have been going out for auditions around the same time, and then when he said everyone wanted a dash of me in their music videos, okay, who did a lot of features 
on big hit singles and videos in the early to mid 2000s. And the person I thought of instantly was Ja Rule. And then I realized Ja Rule is from Queens. So he's talking about growing up in Queens uh, and all of this. I think this could be Ja Rule. And what's interesting about that is we don't really know a lot about his real singing voice. He does rapping and he does some auto-tune, um, but he was singing here, so his voice would not be very identifiable. It's why um, Lil Wayne won, like, season, I think it was season two, right, that Lil Wayne won. You guys always tell me when I'm wrong, by the way, so if, if it's not season two, let me know. The only thing I can't think of was his clue is Avoids Storms, and I can't think of if there was a song he did with, like, Raining, or I, I can't think of that. His, his biggest one probably was the one he did with J-Lo. I think he did two songs, actually, with J-Lo. Um, but he was all over, um, you know, female pop stars records in that era. Um, so we'll see. I mean, look, I've only been wrong once so far this season. So uh, if I'm wrong again, I'm wrong again. But I, I am... I don't know. I'm pretty confident that that Under the Mask is Ja Rule. I don't know his Kardashian connection. I, I you know I don't follow them well enough to know, but um, he does have a lot of business interest because he was part of that fire festival that was a big disaster. And I think he might be one of the crypto guys too. He might have gotten in with 50 Cent on the crypto. So let's see who it is. Um, I'll be very happy if it's Ja Rule because that was the judges did not uh, sway me in any way on that one. That's an original. Let's say. Oh my God, it is Damon John. Damn it. Damn it. Ken got it right. Oh no. It actually was Damon John. Darn it. All right. I'm kind of bummed about that. Uh, I was uh, very proud of my guess, but uh, I, you know, look, I, going with Ken, unless it's a sports person, I usually won't. Although I will say the audience seemed to like that guess. Um, all right. Well, I guess that makes sense because he obviously uh, is a mogul and the business, someone handing him a business card. Yeah. Okay. Shark Tank. Um, I guess he has some kind of thing with the Kardashians. I don't know about that, but all right. Well, I'll admit I'm, uh, a little, a little sad about that. I was happy about my guess. Um, but I, I even had to go back and look at the previous seasons to make sure Ja Rule wasn't on already. Uh, but all right, Damon John, you know what? You got me. That's a good one. Um, and it makes, I mean, he did say he can't sing, but some would say Ja Rule doesn't really sing either. He raps. So that was kind of where I was going with that. But all right, you know what? Hey, I'm uh, I'm still doing very, very well this season. I've only missed two thus far. So next week, I guess we will have four new contestants or maybe three. Maybe they'll stick doing the three. Um, but the first week we had four, so maybe we'll have four and then take one, uh, to the, to the next episode and the next episode. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, it, it varies week to week, I guess, but we will find out together. Uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see everybody next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.